Hello everyone, and welcome back again to Mill TV. For several years, there have been unclear public statements regarding the Air Force's initiative to develop an advanced sixth generation stealth fighter tailored for air to air combat, known as Next Generation Air Dominance, NGAD. These statements hinted that at least two competing companies were well into the development process, with rumors of a prototype having allegedly taken flight back in 2020. The primary objective of NGAD is to replace the Air Force's existing F-22, a Raptor stealth fighters, which, while highly maneuverable and exceptionally stealthy, have proven to be excessively costly to operate and upgrade. This is largely due to their reliance on non-open architecture systems from the 19 minities and early maintenance-intensive radar absorbent materials technology. However, during a meeting in Washington, D.C., Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall unequivocally stated that the Air Force would not pursue more than one NGAD aircraft. The leading contenders for this project are believed to come from a combination of Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and Northrop Grumman, supported by competing jet engine manufacturers Pratt & Whitney and General Electric. The Air Force officially opened submissions for NGAD design proposals on May 18. The chosen concept will be revealed in 2024, with the Air Force aiming to acquire 200 or ideally 250 NGAD fighters. Each of these fighters is expected to cost multiple hundreds of millions of dollars, in contrast to the current F-35, a stealth fighter, which costs approximately $85 million, partly due to economies of scale. NGAD is anticipated to offer superior sensors and communication capabilities compared to the F-22, while retaining greater agility than the F-35. The research, development, testing, and evaluation of NGAD is projected to cost $16 billion over the next five years. Nevertheless, the Air Force is determined to ensure that the future warplane boasts significantly lower operating cost compared to both the F-22 and, hopefully, the F-35. Kendall also emphasized the Pentagon's intention to avoid excessive concentration of NGAD ownership within a single manufacturer, a situation that led to intellectual property disputes with Lockheed, the manufacturer of the F-35. The goal for NGAD is to enable the government to retain intellectual property rights for various aircraft systems from the outset, facilitating the incorporation of new technologies from different companies and the implementation of quick fixes without legal conflicts. It's worth mentioning that there are, somewhat bewilderingly, two separate next-generation air dominance programs sharing the same name. The other program is administered by the U.S. Navy and is intended to replace its F-A-18E slash F Super Hornet carrier-based fighters. For a period, there was speculation that the Air Force might pursue multiple variants of NGAD using a novel procurement model proposed by former tech czar Will Roper. This model emphasized rapid development and short production cycles with 50 to 100 aircraft produced and shorter service lives. Roper believed that digital design tools would make this approach feasible by enabling swift design, adjustments, and prototype testing. However, even by Roper's own calculations, this approach would have been more expensive than the current long-term service life model. In recent years, the notion that the U.S. could rapidly produce a series of progressively superior combat aircraft akin to the way Silicon Valley tech entrepreneurs evolve their online products, has faced well-founded skepticism and no longer aligns with the Pentagon's current strategy. It's essential to remember that a significant portion of the original Century Series aircraft had alarming accident rates or swiftly became ineffective or outdated. To be fair, computer design tools have already demonstrated their potential to accelerate design tasks and the advent of open architecture systems should ideally simplify the process of upgrading weapons, systems, and capabilities.